And if you're new to my channel, I continually share information about astrotheology and how it's being used in mainstream and also learning about it and how it relates to the stars and the positions in the sky. So it's hard for me to go back and go over everything that I've shared because it's so huge, the amount of stuff, that I can only like kind of continue with how this stuff is coming to me and how it's being perceived um, by mainstream and how we can kind of decode it. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is uh, the last video I did was all about the four horses of the apocalypse. So the horse that you need to ride is actually the unicorn. Okay, so the unicorn is the pale horse, which represents death, but death in esoteric uh, terminology means transformation. So it's like you're going into a higher level of consciousness, the death of the old matrix, the death of the old uh, you. Okay, so death that's where it gets, you know, confusing. People think it's literal, like you're just going to die. But it's not. It's really about transformation. So I started to um, realize that the number 49 uh, is really important to the soul. So I want to go over that. I want to go over um, the Ambrosia Festival that is, um, I believe, the Kumba Mela. It's, it's a big, huge festival. I want to go over that because they're using the number 49 in there as well. And then uh, we're going, I'm going to add the tarot cards in a little bit here and there so you understand the symbolism. I also want to go over a big ritual that they did uh, at Washington, D.C., at the Washington Monument because the Washington Monument represents the Tree of Life, okay, uh, through the triangle, the Pennsylvania Triangle, Washington Triangle, is all aligned to um, the Tree of Life. The Washington Monument is the Spica Star in Virgo. This is the Spring Triangle. And then the White House is the Arcturus Star uh, that's in Boots. And then the other star of the triangle is Regulus, which is the Capitol Building. Okay, so there's a ritual being done uh, back in 1939 before World War II, and I want to go over that because it's a ritual um, to the sky. So that was really important and this all ties into the number 49 uh, which is fascinating which uh, ties to the soul. So I'm gonna get into that and I'll, oh and also uh, it ties into a movie in Disney. Okay so I'm gonna go over all these things today. So this is a band called Unicorn and I posted it on my Facebook and then afterwards I realized the snake and the owl was in the picture right, which is your kundalini rising so that you can transform and you have the wisdom of the owl, okay, this whole thing about the owl being bad and it's Moloch and it's all evil, it really just means wisdom, it's, it's um, Minerva, okay, Minerva ties into Athena and this is ancient mythology, it means wisdom and so does the snake, the snake also means wisdom. Depending where your consciousness is, the snake either uh, represents your awakening or it represents the bite you get from it, that you get basically recycled back into this matrix without any memory of what the game is. Okay, it's like it, it just pulls you back in. So the snake has, like, like, like everything, polarity, right? But you want to resonate with the snake being uh, your awakening process. Like the Aphucius constellation, Asclepius, the healer, he is carrying the snake out the doorway. Okay, this is represents that you've got control of your emotional state. You're able to pull yourself into a higher vibrational uh, theta brainwave, and you're not getting pulled into the uh, drama and the fear mongering that's in this matrix. It's like a test. So in my last video, I was explaining about the narwhal tusk and how this relates to the unicorn. Now there's this, there was this London Bridge attacker terrorist. And a guy came and took a narwhal tusk to, uh, you know, put him to the ground. So he chased Khan into the streets. Now Khan relates to the snake as well. This whole the whole word Khan is like snake um, uh, tribe. Okay, so they've got the snake. The guy who's the hero comes in with the narwhal tusk, who's the unicorn. And look at the picture they're using. It says learning together. 
Okay, and the attack, three people died when the guy was stabbing them with a knife. Um, it was happened on November 29th, so that's 11-11, which represents Ascension Day, right? 11-11 is the duality of um, kind of connecting to the other realm. It's like, uh, in a way, it's like uh, going through the Mobius Strip. So anyhow, three people died, this hero comes in, with a narwhal tusk and fights the guy off, you know, that has the knife. So he's the hero. He's the unicorn. So biblically, the unicorn's mentioned. Okay, so Numbers 24, 8. Uh, God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his arrows. So the unicorn, the narwhal tusk, is like an arrow, right? So it's like, this is like tying to this biblical passage, which happened with this guy, you know, stabbing someone with the narwhal tusk of the unicorn. The other passage was Psalms twenty-two, twenty-one: Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorn. Now the lion's mouth represents the strength card. It's number eight. It's Leo, the sun. You handle every situation with maturity, without making a haste. Believe in your inner strength when facing a challenge. Okay, so it's like it's like your strength. And you have the Mobius strip on top of the lady. Now, I've done videos all about the Mobius strip and the science of the Mobius strip and how this brings you to the Alice Universe Theory in quantum physics. And you need to go back and watch all my Mobius strip. I think there's four of them. I was having trouble uploading it. Anyhow, there's a few parts to it. You need to go back and understand the, how esoteric knowledge ties to science, ties to math, and it's, spirituality is science and math. Okay? It, it's, it's all coded to numbers and the, your, it's like uh, you know, how your body has to be the temple, has to be pure, and it, this is what transforms you. Okay, so it ends up being science, okay, because your body goes through a change, a transformation. But the, the lion's mouth is really important because I did these Coca-Cola videos with Babe Ruth um, and uh, Elvis Presley and Aretha Franklin. They all died in the lion's gate with Saturn and Sun conjunct. Okay, so Saturn and the Sun conjunction is really important. Okay, so in, you know, why do they all exit on August 16th? All, they all died at the same time and they were all related to Coca-Cola. I'll get into that a bit more today. But uh, in those past videos, it explains all that. And it all ties, you know, to um, the needle. Because it, it, they all had symbolism to the needle and also to the hand of God. Okay, because Elvis sang that song. Um, and we're going to get into that. Okay, so I'm going to tie a lot of things that I've discussed in the past. I'm going to bring these forward in this video. So if you haven't watched those past videos, you're going to get lost in this one because you're going to be like, I don't know what you're talking about. But you need to go back and do your homework. It's all there. I did it for you. Go back and watch them. So you understand some of the important uh, features because what, what I'm doing is trying to pull this all to Pi Day in 2025 when the sun conjuncts Saturn again on the tail of the whale, okay? So, and that's when the blood moon is on Zabi Java at 322, skull and bones number. When, and Osiris is also conjunction of the sun at the same time, okay? So, it's really important placement in the sky, and it's all tying into all of this stuff, okay? So, go back, watch those videos, and you'll, you'll be able to understand and follow. So, my last video was going on about how the mono is God in the unicorn constellation, mono Suros, and the Suros etymology goes to Ceres, which is the goddess of the harvest. Okay, so she would represent Virgo, the harvest, the woman in the sky. And she's in the Apostles of Washington painting in the Capitol building. Okay, so I started thinking, I'm like, oh, well, you know, the unicorn, when we say unicorn, una, is one, it's the monad, it's God, and, you know, instead of it being Suros or, or Suris, it's corn. So that, so it's like, it's the harvest. Corn is the harvest. That's what Virgo holds. Like, well, she holds a, 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 you know, wheat, but it's the harvest, but it also, corn can be the harvest as well. 
So the whole thing about the unicorn just means, you know, you're with God and or the harvest. It's like you, you, you can see it's like um, it's representing this event, right? The unicorn. So, but anyhow, this kind of came to me and then I started Googling, you know, the cornucopia, corn. And of course, I get this cake that is a cornucopia unicorn horn cake. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it's right there in front of us. The cornucopia is the harvest, and by being the unicorn, you get to drink out of that horn. Okay, that is the, you're, you're drinking the ambrosia, the nectar of the gods, for your immortality. So the ambrosia is the nectar of the gods, and this, somebody sent me this, there's this uh, Devon uh, custard, and it's called ambrosia. It's, it's, it's everywhere, like the symbolism is everywhere. So you want to be able to drink the nectar of the gods, which is like the fountain of youth that keeps you young. Uh, you become immortal, and you get a break for a thousand years, and you get to the golden age. Okay? You do not want to be part of the harvest, which is you become the corn, okay? so, or the wheat. And this is what I think institutional religion is teaching is that you want to be the wheat okay now the wheat is the many it's the masses right when you have a wheat field it's all wheat and there's only a few tares only a few weeds okay and how it's represented in biblical text is you you know you're a tear you're bad you are bad because you're leaving the matrix you're no longer playing the game you, you you've seen through the illusion so in a way you know, the gods that, you know, the god of this realm doesn't want you to leave, okay? He doesn't want you to get to the real god, okay? So, like, we're kind of, like, in a prison cell here, uh, but you don't know you are, okay? You're in a cage. So, for your soul to eventually get tired of this game, okay, all the emotional drama and all the, you know, you're working for the money, the money is your god, okay? Uh, distractions, you know, so that you don't go on your spiritual journey. This is what this whole realm's about. And then once you awaken, you know, you're considered bad. And that's why people that are uh, not taking the Jabba, Juby, whatever, uh, you, 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 um, you end up being persecuted because you're no longer playing the game. Okay, so it's all perfect. It's all divine what's happening, but it's just fascinating to watch it. So I started thinking, I wonder if there's something with Trump being a unicorn. And back in 2018, Sean uh, Spiker mentions Trump as a wondrous mythical creature. And this is what he said. He said, he is a unicorn riding a unicorn over a rainbow. Okay, you can't make this stuff up, okay? So this is the pale horse. You wanna ride the horse of death, this is the unicorn. Even Walmart has a doll with Trump with the unicorn on his head. <laughs> it's hilarious. And here's a cartoon with him as a unicorn. Behold the magical Donald as he frolics through mermaid bras and fairy farts. Oh my god. It's just like, you know, they just make jokes of it so that you don't pay attention to the symbolism. It's the pale horse. The unicorn. That's how you have to be. And it's even, I don't know if you guys remember the, the band, the Rovers. Like, you have to be pretty old to remember that. The Irish Rovers. And they sing this song, you know, uh, about, uh, you know, the whole Noah's Ark. And then the unicorn doesn't get on the ark. It, that's that whole song. That's what it's about. Okay, so yeah, the Noah's Ark. Somebody mentioned this to me a long time ago. That when I did the, all this, um, you know, stuff on the Karina, the Argo ship, the ship is not the good ship, right? And somebody had mentioned to me, oh, I think it might be Noah's Ark, and I was like, no, well, Noah's Ark's supposed to be good, but now I'm starting to realize Noah's Ark is not necessarily good because it brings you back to this realm um, and you know, you, you, you're just getting recycled back. So the Noah's Ark symbolism to me is like with the unicorn being left, doesn't get on the ship, right? So yeah, so I guess the Karina ship is the Noah's Ark. So I wanted to get into this whole uh, number 49. So on April 9th of this year, the death and funeral of Prince Philip. Right, and it was also Prince Philip's anniversary to his uh, second marriage, Camilla. So, April 9th is an important day, it's the 99th day of the year. 
So that's really important as well. The 99 plus 1 brings you back to the, mon the mono, right? The 1. So number 99. And if you go back in time, you know, the whole get smart thing, you know, he's, he's smart. His name is get smart, but he's dumb, right? And, you know, then she, there's number 99. And she's smarter, right? And so the whole thing, <laughs> this whole thing about the smartphones, you know, they're the dumb phones, right? Because it's like you have the smartphones and then they're going to make people take the COVID smart patch because there's going to be a shortage of syringes. And then, you know, we have the smart cities, okay? And, you know, it's, it's, they're get smart. They're all dumb, really. It's just, <laughs> they want to be number 99. So number 99 is 49. It's the, you know, it's April 9th. It's the 99th day of the year. And why are they talking to their shoes? Well, we know the souls, the two souls in Pisces is ruled by Jupiter, the god of this realm, and Neptune, which is kind of like, it can put you in a cloud. It's also metaphysical. It's like your souls, right? It's the two souls of your feet. And I do believe when we get out of this realm, you're going to connect with the other you. Okay, because this is just a portion of your soul in this realm. And I do believe there's parallel realities and that you're going to connect with all those other realities and you're going to become whole. And therefore, you get pulled out of this um, kind of hell realm that we're in, uh, of this duality. So this is, you know, part of the symbolism. And then, of course, it just relates to the, the souls, right? That's why they're talking into their shoes. And what's even more crazy is the 99th day of the year, April 9th, is actually Unicorn Day. Yep, in Scotland, it's Unicorn Day because that's their national um, animal that represents their country. And I couldn't believe it. So it's like, it's all tied in and it all ties into the soul. Now, here it comes. Why is the number 49 so important? Okay, there's a DMT hits uh, your penile gland uh, when in the fetus when the, the soul uh, enters into the fetus. There's a hit of DMT. Okay, so that's your soul coming into this realm on the 49th day. But also 49 days after death in Buddhism uh, derived from the Tibetan Book of the Dead, also known as the Bardo your soul leaves, okay? So there's this thing about your soul and the number 49 coming in and going out, okay? So this is why the 99th day of the year is so important. Now, there's this human gathering that happened in 2019 called the Kummela, which is like the, the Kumba pot is what Aquarius holds, okay? The Mela is like the honey, right? It's in French, it's Mel. So, there's this festival that happens. It was the biggest human, human gathering ever in the world. And they're worshiping the Amrita. So it's almost like Amenita. Okay, so it's like, it's the tree of life, right? And so I want to just go over this because when I was watching this video, he talks about the number 49. So I just wanted to show you, you know, this is all to do with the ambrosia, the nectar of the gods, this whole festival. This is what the Kumela is all about. Now, number 17, the star card in the tarot is Aquarius. That's what you want to, you want to be that card, right? Because you're Aquarius, you're getting pulled out of this realm by a fish hook. Saturn pulling you out of the fixed cross. Somebody mentioned to me the other day, they're going, why do you think we're living on the fixed cross? Okay, and because, you know, the equinoxes and the solstices align to the cardinal cross, but they don't align to what's happening in the sky, right? We don't, you know, Christmas is not, Christmas, the sun is not in Capricorn. It's actually in Sagittarius. So this person said to me, well, we're really on the mutable cross right now because that's where everything's aligning. But if you go and look at the tarot cards and um, the symbolism of what Jesus sits in, they're using the four symbols of the fixed cross, okay? Even the tarot card, the world card, it's the fixed cross, okay? So it's like nothing's aligning, nothing's making sense, right? We're not in cardinal, uh, which is what the, the uh, you know, Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of uh, Capricorn is. We're not in that. That happened like, you know... Uh, 
was, I went back in time, it was like 16,000 years ago. It was like a long time ago when the sky was aligning to that. And then mutable cross, that's what the sky is aligning to in a way, but it's not what we're living because they're representing everything on the fixed cross. Okay? So I do believe they're mirroring the fixed cross back at us. And you have to get pulled out of the fixed cross by Aquarius, which is the phoenix. And you're also Uranus rules uh, Aquarius, not just Saturn. So it's like you, and Uranus is the future. Okay, It's your freedom. It's all about freedom. Okay, so he's talking about it's supposed to give you immortality. This is why all these people gather there and go in, these, in the water. And uh, they drop liquid in four different places in the water. And the waters meet at the confluence of these two rivers, the Ganja and the Yamuna. Okay, it's always the confluence of the two rivers. It's really important to know this. This is like, it's like the why, okay? So even when the two eclipses cross in the United States, the great two eclipses, the 2017 one, the 2024 one, they're crossing just below St. Louis at the confluence of the Ohio River and the Mississippi, the great river. You have, you have to remember water represents memory, okay? Because water holds memory. So it's all ancestral memory of, of the lands that go into the rivers and then they combine with other tribes I guess or other DNA ancestral DNA lines so the confluence of two rivers is very important so he also talks about these satyrs which represent traditional aspect of life which you know they're they're white like so it, it kind of just reminds me of the fool right they're like the fools and they're considered to be the fools because they're very spiritual people and they gather there as well and I guess they do weird things and act sexual. And now this one, he's sitting there talking about how it's all aligned to Gemini. So Gemini in the sky. So that's interesting because that goes back to, you know, the lovers card. And this card uh, represents discernment, right? And so, you know, the twins, again, um, you know, one's immortal, one's not. Uh, more, is only mortal, you know, and this all ties to the red and black horses, right, in the, of the apocalypse, the Gemini. But right below Gemini is Monseros, the unicorn. So they're worshipping a simple and happy life without suffering. The festival takes place every six years. So the last one was in 2019, so the next one will be on Pi Day, year 2025 but the cycle is every 12 it's called the man come <laughs> which is the big cone okay so now we're back to the freaking cone again the cornucopia cone right so anyhow the next one is going to be in 2025 so that's important and so the one in 2025 will be the big cone which is the most important one the biggest gathering was 150 million people like, that's crazy. But guess what? A million people coming during the 49 days of festival. So there you go. It's back to the soul, you know, immortality. So when you look at the odd number chart, and this is why you want to be odd, the fifth uh, odd number is number nine, which is like the hermit, right? So you're odd. <laughs> number 17 odd number is number 33, right? So that's a sacred number. Um, in Freemasonry, and then the 49th, uh, you know, as an odd number, it's the 25th number, and the odd number. So it's like your 2025 is aligning esoterically to the number 49, okay? So it's like this is Pi Day, okay, when we have this Saturn-Sun crazy conjunction and like with this blood moon on Zabi Java, with the sun conjuncting Osiris, okay? So it's like, the fact that this is all happening, and it's all, you know, it's just, to me, it's all super divine. Like, how this realm works is mind-boggling. So I'm assuming, you know, this is why the number 33 is so important, because it ties to this star card. This is the ascension card, okay? Number 17. We all know what letter number 17 is, right? So, you know, it's just freaking amazing. Anyhow, it's it's all aligned. You want to be the star. You want to go into the Nemosin River, regain your memory. 
bright future, happiness, best changes. Okay, this is a very good card that tells a person about the future success. It is worth to trust people as they will bring only good news and help. This proposition must be taken. Um, so there's always a bad side too, but anyhow, the whole thing is this ties into a biblical passage because there's one foot in the water and one foot on land. But it says that they're holding a scroll. Now, water is like a book of memory. And I did find a tarot card where the star card is holding a scroll. So this is what it is. You want to be the number 17, which is the 33rd odd number. And the moon and the sun, because you want to be between the two pillars, the moon and the sun, um, their cycles align every 33 years. Okay, so you want to be on the middle path, number 33, which is number 17. And here's where it gets kind of a little bit weird because the, on the periodic table, the number 49, you know, has to do with um, iron, lead, zinc, and copper ores, and it's an indigo color. So we've got the blue, but what's interesting is they're using it in flat screen TVs. So it's a big uh, component of flat screen TVs, and it's actually getting more expensive to get right now. And, um, you know, it's back to virtual reality, right? So they've taken this sacred number and coded it to this kind of matrix where it's the screen. And iridium is not in any food uh, or water, but it's, and it's not in bodies over 25 to 30 years old. But you can take supplements for it. So Indi or Indium is rare trace mineral reported to help balance 23 of the 24 hormonal systems in the body. Little is to none of indium is found in agricultural food chain anymore. It's sometimes classified as a heavy metal or no officially uh, recognized nutritional or psychological function. So, but then they're saying they did a control study where um, it helps with uh, re reducing sleeping time um, helps with migraines, it helps with memory, um, blood sugar. So there are things that it is helping with. So it's interesting that it's not in the food chain anymore. Like, I guess it's like, how did it just get out of the food chain? But they're saying it's recognized as safe, and doctors are using it in dentists, and they're actually uh, for benefits of people with uh, chronic fatigue or help patients off drugs and alcohol. So there's obviously an important factor to it. And this is where I kind of got perked up when I saw this. It has high levels of copper and chromium concentrates. Now, um, yeah, so it's chromium, you know, the chrome, chromium is the number 24 of the periodic table. It's the skull, and, skull uh, like um, Grateful Dead symbol. It's the skull with wings. So it represents ascension. It comes from rubies. This is where the ruby slippers comes in for the chromium. So uh, copper is important for ascension as well. Uh, I guess so that you can handle these uh, energies coming from the sun when the sun you know you pass through the sun uh, God okay is from the sun Gambalese so this is important this Indian so number 49 you're starting to understand the importance of this through the soul I'm not telling you to go start taking Indian I'm just saying they're saying here that it could be unsafe um, you know there's something it's just interesting how it's kind of like this trace element, but it's not in our food anymore. It's not in our water, but it does make people feel better, but it's supposed to be unsafe. So I don't know. So Babe Ruth, who died on August 16th when the sun and Saturn were in conjunction in the Lion's Gate, same as Elvis Presley and um, Aretha Franklin, he is tied to April um, 9th. Some, he was rushed to the hospital. And he's supposed to be the titan, right? He's supposed to be the super athlete, you know, and then he ends up dying from, you know, taking, he took the first um, chemo shot and then he ends up dying in front of everybody and traumatizes everybody. But anyhow, he, <laughs> the, the whole death of him because he was like the superhero, a uh, baseball player. So now, you know, he's tied, they've tied him, you know, he just got rushed off to the hospital. Why would you want to put that on history, you know, records? So what? The guy went to the hospital. But oh no, they tie it in to April 9th. Yeah, go watch all my Coca-Cola videos with Elvis Presley and the Needles and these three players that all died August 16th. And you'll notice that um, 
Babe Ruth, you know, and all of them actually were all uh, sponsored by Coca-Cola. So Coca-Cola is the tree of life, but it goes back to Latin etymology. So I started to realize that they use the word cola in Latin. They put it at the end of the word, so um, uh, suffix. And so it's has it has like almost this worship. It means worship. It says here inhibitor, but you know what the meaning was uh, with this nick nica cola means night, uh, and then cola means inhibitor. But there's also here with Juno, it means worship. So since Babe Ruth, Elvis Presley, and Aretha all died on August 16th, and they were all uh, you know, being represented by Coca-Cola. And I did the whole thing about Coca-Cola and what that means to the black people that were slaves and it's the cola nut tree. But it's the, it's the worship to the tree, right? So now it goes back to Latin, okay? So this is really old etymology. And this is like telling you it's cola means worship. So you're worshiping the tree. It's the warship, okay? I, I don't like that word, worship. It's war ship okay you're you're it's a warship so it's like is that the Karina Noah's Ark is that ship is it the warship right <laughs> that's what I'm saying I it's like it's weird I just find it bizarre that cola is going back to Latin and then it gets really weird because April 9th this is when they buried Martin Luther King okay now he ties in to a Saturn Sun uh, conjunction when he died. Okay, so you know this is like bizarre, right? Okay, so you know it was uh, it was in Pisces, but the whole thing is the Saturn Sun conjunctions are obviously super markers. So the king dies, and Osiris is right there. So you know this is the same as Elvis Presley and Babe Ruth. They all die Saturn Sun conjunction, but Martin Luther King, the king. He dies on the number 44, which means kill in Gematria. And you know, Aretha Franklin and Elvis sang the song, Take My Hand, Precious Lord. So check this out. The day he gets shot, he gets shot on April 4th, right? This is when he got shot with the Saturn Sun conjunction. Um, King was booked in room 306. Okay, 306 is um, Gemini and Virgo. Okay, that's, that's the third house and the sixth house, Gemini and Virgo. It's mutable cross. It's, it's not good. Okay, so uh, at, you know, what's well, not good. Virgo is the, the Virgin Mary, but she's also the harvester. She also has the ascension star. So I shouldn't say it's not good, but it's just, it's part of the mutable cross that is groupthink. Okay, because it's Virgo is service to others at detriment of self. Okay, so, uh, so he... So the Ralph uh, Abersathy was present at the assassination. He testified to the U.S. State House Committee um, of, on assassinations that King and his entourage stayed in room 306 so often that it was known as the King Abernathy Suite. According to Jesse Jackson, who was present, King's last words on the balcony before the assassination were spoken to musician. Ben Branch, you know, it's like Branch, you know, the tree, oh, yeah. was, <laughs> was scheduled to perform that night at an event that King was attending. And, he, and so King says to him, Ben, make sure you play. Take my hand, precious Lord, in the meeting tonight. Play it really pretty. Okay, so then he gets shot, right, on April 4th. But they bury him on April 9th. Okay, so I'm just saying it all keeps tying back in to all these people that have died on a Saturn Sun conjunction. Okay, and you know, it's like, so it's like a marker. It's, they're telling us this is really important what's happening in the sky when these events happen. And it has to do with the Lord. It has to do with uh, Da Vinci's painting where the, where the man is reaching out with the finger. And that is the Yod, that's the Hermit card number nine, the fifth odd number. Okay, so. I'm just letting you know, this is all tying in esoterically. The hermit card is ruled by Virgo. Virgo 
that rules the sixth house and Gemini that rules the third house, so room 306, are both ruled by Mercury. And Mercury is on the ladder on the mutable cross. There's no Venus, there's no Saturn. It's just Mercury, Mercury. And on the pillars is Jupiter, Jupiter. So it's a very bipolar kind of locked in cross, groupthink cross that has no love, no Venus, and has no key or no Phoenix, Saturn. Okay, it's just ruled by Mercury, which is finance, money. You're worshiping money, the corporal reality. You're not worshiping spirituality. And then you didn't, if you thought that was weird, this gets even more weird. Okay, April 9th, 1939, Marian Anderson sings before 75,000 people at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. So this is a ritual to the Tree of Life and the Lincoln Memorial that faces the, you know, the reflecting pool, which is the nectar of the gods surrounding this tree, okay? This happens right before the war with all these people get sacrificed, right? And guess what's happening in the sky when she sings it? Same location of Martin Luther King's death. Saturn Sun conjunction in Pisces in the soles of your feet, okay? <laughs> Neptune is close to Zabi Java, um, Ascension, and then the moon is in the Golden Gate, okay? And then Osiris, who is like the tree of life, is on the manger of Christ, okay? This is when she's singing this song, Eva Maria, okay? Now, this you have to go back and listen to the, her sing this. She, her voice is amazing. Okay, she was supposed to. What happened was she was supposed to sing somewhere else, and then they wouldn't let her because she was black. So then they create this. You know, she she went to to Washington and sang in front of all these people because she wasn't allowed to sing in this theater. Okay, so but you know it was a ritual. Okay, a huge ritual. It's a ritual to Virgo. It's a German song, right? Um, and of course, they don't translate it. If you go, like, just find the, the lyrics for it, it, they won't translate it. So I, I, like, properly. So I put it in Google Translate, and it goes, Hail Mary. Eva Maria is Hail Mary, Hail Mary. Virgo mild. Here, a virgin. Um, you know, so it's like, it's, it's a ritual to Virgo. Okay? The ch and she's like the harvest queen. Right? So, pure maid, demons of the earth and the air, chased away by your eyes' homage. You cannot stay here with us. We want you to bow silently to fate, for thy uh, statutory consolation blows at us. To the virgin may hold you lean, the child who pleads for you, the father. Hail Mary. Okay, so, you know, she has the two stars, right? She has ascension and she has the, you know, the tree of life. And it says here, when we descend on the rock to sleep and your protection covers us, will softly the hard rock sink us. You smile, rose scents blow in the dull rock chasm. So, yeah, the rose is your ascension. It's your DNA ascending. Um, we sleep slave safely in the morning, whether people are still so cruel. Oh, Virgo. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, anyhow. It's fascinating. It's a ritual to Virgo. You know, this is what they, they, she sang. Eva Maria. This is the Catholic version. There's a Latin Catholic prayer version. Hail Mary, full of grace. Mary, full of grace. Mary, full of grace. Hail, hail the Lord. The Lord with thee. Blessed are though thou art among women and blessed. Blessed is the fruit of the womb. The womb, Jesus. Hail Mary. Holy Mary. Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Pray, pray for us. Pray for us sinners. How and at the hour of our death, the hour of our death, the hour, the hour, the hour of our death, the hour of our death. Hail Mary. Okay, so this goes into Walt Disney. Walt Disney used this song in his 1940 Fantasia. So you know, this is a ritual to this, this Ascension Day, okay? So what I'm just saying is that they did it right before the war when all these people were dying. So it's like, the, it's just the kind of the same as 9-11, right? It's just a ritual. They create death, but it's like they, they're putting the death in not the true meaning of death. The true meaning of death is changing and transforming. It's not being killed, okay? So it's like, you know, they sacrificed all these people to the tree. And all Christians that are looking for heaven's bride, she's Eva Maria.
Okay, it was in the Fantasia, you know, uh, movie. Okay, the bells ring out solemn praise for you. The anguish of the pride, the living glory of our nights, of our nights and days, the Prince of Peace, your arms embrace, who holds the darkness, fade and cower. Oh, save us, Mother, full of grace, in life and in our dying hour. So, you know, it, it is good in a way because, you know, they're talking about we're being saved, we're not going to the tree, we're being saved and everything. But just the fact that they did it before World War II, I just find it, you know, really scummy, you know, and all these people died. So, yeah, so this is all in the Fantasia song, and there was controversy about so it. So Beyonce did this whole ritual at the Grammys, right, about the Igbo people, the black people that came over and then sacrificed themselves and walked into the lake. She did a whole ritual, and she has two songs around that. It's in the Coca-Cola video I did. But she also sang Eva Maria. So there you go. They're, they're, they're telling us. This really blew me away because I had this huge dream about the white lady on the lake. And she was healing you by going into the river. Um, and anyhow, so this whole thing about Eva Maria. The piece was composed as a setting of the songs um, from a narrative poem, The Lady of the Lake. So this whole song, Worshipping Virgo, is to do with the White Lady, the Lady of the Lake, which is all to do with King Arthur's mythology. And then, like I said, the White House represents the Arcturus star in boots, and that's King Arthur. Okay, so it's like, oh my God, it's just, like, it just, it's repetitive. Like, it's always the same kind of, you know, story about how to become free from this realm. Um, but it's just fascinating how it all ties into the mythology. So the Lady of the Lake is Virgo. And the fact that George Washington aligned the whole Washington, D.C. that used to be called Rome all to the Spring Triangle, and I'll get into why it's so important that he did it to the Spring Triangle, it's all tied into this Fantasia movie. So I'll get into that as well. Now they're ha saying here, you know, it all ties to the bread, the fat, the ear, the corn, and Virgo, and that we don't really know who she really is. Like, it's like she's like the mystery woman in the sky, but she's, she's everything. She's the Harvest Queen. She's, she's uh, you know, Ceres, uh, and she's, she's everything. She's, she's the virgin. She's, you know, so it's just like, wow. It's just, how do we not, how did they just erase this from our consciousness? So they used, um, this part of the, the song from the Rites of Spring, which was um, a musical composition, right? And it has, like, the, the, the Irish film censored this part of the Fantasia movie because of its materialistic portrayal of the origins of life. Now, so I wanted to get into that. I was like, okay, so why is this so controversial um, about, you know, what is this Rites of Spring? But it really piqued up my interest because I explained to you guys the pale horse of the apocalypse is related to spring. Okay, so spring, and that's when Pi Day is, is in spring, and that's when April 9th is, is in spring. So the ritual to spring, the greenery, um, which is meaning pale, right? It's the, um, the Latin word ends up being green, which means pale. So it's the green horse. So anyhow, this is why the rites of spring, we need to go into this and just figure out what this all means. So to me, it ends up being like Ascension Day. So they're saying here, first part of the work uh, would be called the Kiss of Earth and would consist of games and rituals interpreting the procession of sages, so healers, right? Cumulating in a frenzy dance as the people embrace spring. And then the part two, the sacrifice, would have the darker aspect, secret night games of maidens leading to a choice of one for sacrifice and her eventual dance to the death before the sages. The original working title was changed to Holy Spring. Um, and then I think the Rites of Spring, it ended up being called the Rites of Spring with the subtitles, Pictures of the Pagan Russia. Okay, so these, these are ancient... Um, ancient these are these are um, uh, 
it's, it's even in a painting there, but th these are like sacred texts, right? That, that have been kind of put into music and uh, operas and stuff. So anyhow, um, Disney ends up putting this in the Fantasia. Um, and there's a ballad here to Pet Rushka. Now Pet Rushka is all tied into this. And this is actually the fool's card. It's, um, it ends up being the fool again. So you can see he's like dressed up as a fool. Um, but this is a ballet and this is the version of a solemn pagan rites sage elders seated in a circle watching a young girl dance herself to death. It's, it's the rites of spring, right? Was sacrificing her to uh, propagate to the god of spring. So it's like, you know, you give up the corporal reality, you go to death, but see how it gets all twisted with Christianity that this is a ritual of sacrificing people, making them die, right? So this is how they, you know, and then of course, they end up putting that into the programming because they do these rituals and then death comes. So it's like, of course, it's in our conscious, you know, our subconscious that this is all kind of bad. But when you can see through the veil and you see through the illusion, you realize they're just showing us our own freedom and then we're being told that that's bad. So it's like a total like psyop everywhere. So they're saying here, April 1942, yeah, that was the censor. And then they're saying a black centaurette called Sunflower was depicted polishing the hooves of a white centaurette. And the second named Attica appeared briefly during the procession scene to, uh, with Bacchus and his followers. So we know Bacchus is Dionysus, right? That's his other name. So it's a ritual to Dionysus, which is ascension, which is like you drink the wine and you ascend. So the British music publisher, uh, Bosey and Hawks, filed a further lawsuit. So the lawsuit, uh, yeah, they filed it because of the rights to distribute the rights to spring in 1991 video release because the permission granted to Disney by uh, Stravatsky in 1940 was only in the context of film to be shown in theaters. So they couldn't use it in like the videos. So uh, anyhow, so yeah, it's always about this, uh, this you know, um, song, the, the Rites of Spring. So the works, so what's also he's saying here, the, um, including the Ride of the Valkyries. Yeah, this is all to do with uh, North mythology. So this is, yeah, so they have that in there as well, the North mythology is in this movie. So I need to watch it. I haven't watched it yet. So the etymology is Latin for fantasia, which is the power of imagination, uh, perception, right? Uh, picture to oneself, the phantos, visible, um, and the, uh, to imagine, to have visions. It's phos, light, to show and to bring light. So this whole meaning of fantasia is the light, is the light bringer, it's phosphorus, right? And it's, it has to do, um, not the nectar of the gods, you know, urine is what phosphorus, phosphorus comes from urine, but there's also phosphorus in our brains. And I will go into that in another video, but it's really cool that this is all to do with ascension. So the whole Fantasia movie is really all about ascension. So this is what George Washington built, right? I've explained this. This is Washington, D.C. Actorus is the White House. It's King Arthur. King Arthur dies. Spike a star is the wheat, the corn, um, and then Regulus is the Capitol building. And Spike a star would be the Washington Monument. Now, this spring triangle. Now I understand why they built the B Washington D.C. around the spring triangle because it's the the spring, the rites of spring. It's to do with the green man and to do with the pale green horse okay this is what this is all about and this is like the the guy that has the key to get you to be free now this blood moon at 322 on pi day is so important because it's in the spring triangle right it's in that so it's all correlating to the mythology now the saturn sun conjunction which everything is about saturn sun conjunction right it, uh, Elvis Presley, 
um, Babe Ruth, Aretha Franklin, and uh, you know, then um, Martha Luther King. And this is so important then. So we have one on Pi Day and Day of Infinity. And Osiris is in conjunction with the sun at the same time as this blood moon, when the, the moon turns to blood, the day of the Lord. Okay, this is all happening in Pisces, the house of spirituality. So, what I'm saying is, that, you know, the reason that Trump did his executive order and had Buzz Lightyear there, and then they say infinity and beyond when he signed it, it's they're telling us this is really, really important. And these are all markers. So the Saturn-Sun conjunction, I'm convinced something's going to happen this day. Or maybe they'll wait the 27 days later and it will be on Unicorn Day. So this is Pi Day in 2025 with a Saturn, Sun, Osiris, Neptune, I think Enki's in there too, conjunction in Pisces at the same time as this blood moon, right? So I've looked at the sky a lot. I've traced all the blood moons and I have not seen anything like this with a blood moon and a Sun, um, Osiris conjunction. Osiris is really important, right? He's the, the mythology of King Arthur. It goes like pre-King Arthur, pre-Odin. Uh, it's so old, it's Egyptian, but he's the tree of life, right? He's the guy that gets sacrificed, the Lion King that goes down. And so um, this is important that it's Osiris in conjunction with the sun. So this is happening on Pi Day, when um, Infinity Day, hence why Trump team had, you know, Trump wearing the infinity hand. And then when he had Buzz Lightyear at one of his executive orders, a signing, they both said infinity beyond when they finished signing it. Okay, so this is they're like they're letting us know infinity is really important, right? So I'm saying that you know maybe it happens on this day, or maybe they're gonna wait 27 days later and have it on Unicorn Day, which is the 99th day of the year, um, and uh, you know that would be April 9th. Now, somebody sent me this, this is all about the gates of hell opening. Because this also ties into August 16th when Elvis Presley died and Aretha Franklin and Babe Ruth and they're all tied to the needle, right? you got to go back and watch my old videos how the needle all comes into this, um, the representation of the needle. Uh, so now, and I would assume it's Cleopatra's needle, it's the, it's the, the whole thing about the needle is, is going to the tree, okay? This is all ancient mythology. And you can go back and watch that in my old videos, the Coca-Cola videos. Now, the Gates of Hell were also made on August 16th. And they're now being opened in an exhibition um, on October 15th, which is two days prior to the beginning of the Osiris Festival. Osiris Festival runs from October 17th to November 3rd, which is always Election Day. Okay, so we're right in the Osiris Festival right now. And they're opening the Gates of Hell. Now, is it hell into the inner earth, you know, and then everybody thinks it's hell, like, you know, Christianity would consume, assume that this is like, you know, the hell, you know, they're opening up the hell, but the inner earth is, yes, it has hell in it, but it also has um, Elysium, which is not hell, okay? So you have to understand the mythology before Christianity. So there's two places, and Jesus did go down there after he died. Okay, so it's not literal hell, but it's interesting that they've opened up these, uh, this exhibition right in the Osiris Festival. So Inner Earth is really Hades. It got turned into hell um, and, you know, being said it was like an evil place, but, the, you know, you have to take everything with a grain of salt and understand these are really old, old... Um, mythologies and you know what you're being told to perceive is you know the hell is below us and heaven is above us and necessarily maybe isn't the right thing everything is upside down in this world so the warship a ship in the sky might not be heaven right and the the feet below us you know the earth below us might not be hell okay so the, just keep an open mind about these things but just understand the mythology and uh, just keep looking at the sky, because the sky is what's uh, creating our reality. So Trump had announced on April 9th, um, 49th, right? Um, so about his social media platform. He was opening 
He says it's about, it would be like opening the bell for round two in this fight to save the Republic. Okay, so this is all going back to Plato's Republic. And Plato's Republic is all to do with justice. You need justice in society. And this is why Omega is the justice card in the tarot. The fool is the alpha. So it's like you need to have justice in your heart to believe in justice. And when you believe in justice, you start to see the illusion of this realm. And then when you can see through the illusion, you become, you know, light enlightened, right? So then you become the enlightened soul. The point is, is to fight for justice, but don't become consumed with anger in that fight, right? You have to stay in bliss because the true, true, true freedom is your ability to see through the matrix. It's not trying to fix the matrix. It's not trying to demand everybody to see it from your point of view. It's to just see through it and then realize it's a big joke, right? That's what it's all about. So we know Trump played the Joker movie at the White House. That's a creepy movie, right? And kind of like, why, why would you play that? It's because it's the fool's card. It's the pet ruska. So the pet ruska, uh, is, he fights, he enforces moral justice with a slapstick, you know, so he acts like an idiot, speaks in a high-pitched, squeaky voice, and argues with the devil. So it's like you have to laugh at the devil. Because that's what really who rules this realm, in a way, is the devil, right? Because Saturn holds the key, and Saturn is supposed to be, like, in a way, the devil, right? Um, but he's also the ruler of the Golden Age. So he holds the key. Capricorn is the devil, right? He's the devil card in the tarot. So he holds the key. So you have to laugh at the devil. And then when you laugh at him, he gives you the key. Okay, so this is, yeah, it's just fascinating. So I'm definitely going to have to watch this Fantasia movie. I'm, I'm, it's definitely something on my list to do. So I really appreciate you guys sending me stuff that you find and see. Um, and it kind of helps out in, in kind of knowing, it's kind of like a, almost like a, a hide mind and we're, oh, and if, if a couple of people tell me to look at something, I'm like, oh, I really need to look at this. So it's kind of fun. Um, and I appreciate you guys doing that. And then, um, you know, I appreciate you supporting my channel and, uh, taking your readings, uh, your sad returns, because this is important to know thyself, right? Once you know thyself, you can become at ease with who you are and some of the things you've experienced in life. Is you can realize that they were just part of your soul's journey. And it gives you an inner peace and it gives you a kind of uh, understanding of what your purpose is for your soul to get to this kind of bliss state. So I appreciate you guys supporting me there. Um, you know, getting the school going. I know I keep saying that, but it's been busy because I'm being prepared for winter and everything outside. So trying to get uh, that going and I've got all the stuff now to do it. So just got to do the filming and then get it uploaded. And please like and subscribe. I know a lot of people really love my channel and you guys, you know, really are, are loyal and you watch it all the time. But the channel isn't growing very much. I'm kind of like, why is it not growing? And it's like, I never asked you guys to hit the like and subscribe button. So I'm going to start asking that because the more it gets into the algorithms, maybe the channel will grow. And I know I've had a few shout outs from a different uh, bigger channels, but still, I'm kind of shocked with how small it, it is. And, you know, it's, it's fun stuff. Either people aren't consciously ready for it and that's why they're not attracted to it or um, I'm being blocked somehow on YouTube. I don't know. But if more people hit the like and subscribe, the more the algorithms are going to pull my channel to, the, to uh, be recommended. So anyhow, just wanted to push that out there and uh, hope you guys are all in bliss. Take care.